Hello? 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 Yes, Scott, I'm a little bit off today. <laughs> <laughs> Ivan, you called. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> we were just talking about you. Was that another warranty call? <laughs> that yeah, it was. Yeah, it was. Has yours slowed down at all, by the way? No. Uh, in the last week, I, I have gotten less warranty calls than I had in, in the previous ones. Right. I don't know if something happened or if they're going to switch now and start baiting me into Ooh, something actually, else. But. No, you bring up a point here. There was an article that just recently passed. Um, they actually prosecuted two major companies that are part of uh, robocalls. Really? Good. Yeah. Um, Good. It, unfortunately, just like big corporations, the fines was just a drop in the bucket compared to the profits yeah. they were making. But they made some somewhat of an action towards this kind Good. of harassment of robocalls. And these guys made millions of dollars just to make these calls on behalf of other companies to sell warranties for air conditioners, cars, and all that stuff. You know, it, it, I... I you know that at some point it has to work somewhere. They would not continue right. to do it. You know, someone's biting. Yeah. But I look through just recent calls that have come at Greenwood, Mississippi, El Paso, Texas, <laughs> Pueblo. I know nobody in Pueblo. Fayetteville, Ohio. That's it. Aspen, Akron. You know, I, yeah. I know none of these. Thank God. And your phone may have this feature. And look for it. Where you can go in and you can block numbers that you don't know. Yep. My phone has a setting where if I don't have that number stored in as somebody's contact, right. it will automatically send it to voicemail. You don't right. ditch the call. You just it won't ring. You don't even know. All of a sudden, your thing will go off that you got a message. Right. And then you look at it and go, okay, it's four seconds long. I know. Yeah, you know yeah. <laughs> nobody well, left anything. My, well, and mine shows up potential spam. I get that too. Yeah, my, so that helps a bunch. But again, reading if you got caller ID, looking at where it's from. Sometimes the city don't go with the state, or, and sometimes I mean they're really El Paso, good. Kansas. It, it's a local <laughs> number. I well, mean, I've yeah, even no. got local numbers. I have to a point there, Scott. Is the technology's there where they do create phony numbers yeah. and just ghost accounts, if you will? And well, you not even that. I called a number back. And a lady answered out of Fort Collins. Sure. And I said, yeah, I just missed a call from you. She goes, uh, no, you didn't no, miss it's, a call it's, from the They're technologies, good. No, the technology is <laughs> there. And to add more to how powerful the technology is, it was two guys. Two no guys way. created like millions of phone calls a day. Oh, just my goodness. Just because of the algorithms and the computers did all the work for them. All they had to do was just saying, hey, here's the range of the phone numbers that we'll use. Wow. And here's the automated message we want you to use. And... Bam. If somebody actually did say, hello, what's going on? It will transfer the call to somebody in India where they do all the call center stuff out of states uh, to handle the rest of the process there. And that's where they make their money. Once that call transfers, right. that's how they make their money. Well, they've given up on me on my car insurance, my warranty. They finally have? Yeah, now they're after to give me capital. Oh, really? Yeah. Yeah, they're, they, yeah. I don't own a company called Clitter Glitter or Critter Glitter or... Yeah, they get them all wrong all but the they, time. Yeah. Yeah, they want to <laughs> yeah, sell you. That's a pretty good indication <laughs> that, no, that company doesn't need capital right now. <laughs> <laughs> it is the Mike in the Mountain, by the way. Welcome. Yes, I'm Brian Gary with Scott Sisko and mm. James, the person you never see behind the controls over there. The but the you know what? We were, we were talking about the uh, uh, getting the, the calls. Yeah. All right. Yeah. And you get this. And what, what always makes me laugh is when you go through things online you'll go through the form and they want to make sure you're not a robot right right where you'll put through these things and then it pops up i am not a robot and you got to check it if people have come up with the technology to robocall to do all these mm -hmm. haven't they come up with the technology to check a box that says i am not a robot not only that, but also check all the buses in that picture. You know, you guys like that's what I see too. Yeah, which ones have buses? Like they haven't come up with that tech. Yep. That's what stopped it. We found a way to stop all cyber hacking activity. All right. You got to point out which one of these have stairs. Right. All right. Have you ever sweat it though on one of those, Brian? When you're looking at one of those and you're just like, it, it just the sliver of those stairs is in another square. Like, yes. do I click that or do I not click that? No, I'm gonna fail. They're gonna think I'm a robot. Right. 
I'm not sure if that's a traffic light. Don't they know I have old eyes? I can't see that. Right. Is this Australia? Because these lights look backwards, too. <laughs> I'm just glad they don't say pick out the color, because I would be a robot. Oh, that would be just so awful <laughs> for you. Robot. It would. Dude is colorblind, and I just, I can't imagine. Uh, you know. You get your heart uh, to give directions to, because uh, it's, you know, we're going to turn right at the green barn, and then we'll be over by that yeah, yellow one. And I, so, so which shade of gray? And I end up in Aspen, Texas. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> calling me, <laughs> checking calling, on my warranty. Calling you on your warranty. <laughs> Oh, oh man. man. Exactly. Oh, jeez. It's going to be a good one. Well, I happened dude. to notice right away, dude, as we uh, sat down, you still haven't fixed your freaking chair. These well, guys, no, well, you have ragged on me for like six months to get my own chair, to get a different chair. Your chair sucks. It's lame. When are you going to move in? I got this thing. Yeah, you care so much for it. It's been broken for nearly three months now, and you have done nothing. And here I am in my little chair that's perfect still. I got no no equipment problems here. Listen. Come on. Riding a 1947 Panhead, <laughs> it ain't going to stay together, man. <laughs> I believe it's I'm HD, sitting on baby. a 1987 Craftsman. Uh, well, <laughs> yeah. When it was made in the USA. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Guaranteed warranty. Absolutely. Guaranteed warranty. That was, we know the problem, again, we mentioned it before, the screw you need to fasten the side well, that yeah, is dropped I've, is $100. Well, Because it's, it's a Harley. It is a Harley. Yeah. It is a Harley. It's built for her ple your pleasure. That's... <laughs> and that's edited it out. Yeah, thank you. What? Thank no, you. The it, amount of times is. we just stop. It, well... I'll go back to cleaning my nails. <laughs> <laughs> Have you ever made a knife, by the way? No, I've never made a knife. I I've used a lot of knives. No, I'm sure you have, but I, you know, you you watch like uh, you know an old time survival show where they'll take a rock and they will, yeah. you know, they will work that thing until they can get an edge for it. Mm. Primitive tools, all that kind of stuff. Would you? ever get off on that kind of situation because we've talked about like naked and afraid and those kind of yeah, shows that, that show. aside from you know your medical conditions and yes. so forth that would probably yeah. come into play right would you dig a survivalist kind of show well so, so like billing and i or do i do a show like that would you okay oh, let, would let's say love. let just put you on one of those shows because oh, we've yeah. always thought you were made for tv right, but right. but a show like a, a survivor or alone you know or something yeah. like that would you be and if you would do one would you be more apt to do something like alone where it's just you or would you like to do it in a group setting where you're in the social aspect of it too because i think you would excel in both situations no i yeah i think so i think i'd i'd do good in both situations if i had my preference though, i'd probably go the alone i'm really a, yeah i'm an independent isolated i mean you guys have seen me out on the river and doing what i do man i i zone out man i know you guys are there but when i'm in the river or in the job um I go into my own little realm, man. I become one with nature, mm -hmm. man. And and so, no, I think I dig the alone part more, man. You know, I'm going to cry bull crap. Yeah? I, I am, because as much as I think you dig the alone aspect, right? and you do, you go into your <clears throat> own thing. But I think you could only handle that in a dose, because you are... Whether you want to admit it or not, you are a lot like me, where as much as they drive you crazy, you right. need people. No, uh, yeah, you, you're you, right. You you're really right. did, because part of what you're all about and why you were put on this earth right. is to change Agreed. people's moods. Agreed. Is to affect people and get that one-on-one -on -one interaction. Sure. What you do for people and the way you lift them, you can't do that alone. No, you're right. So, you're I, right. I, I mean, you're one of those people who, as much as you thrive on just getting away from everything... You need to affect yeah. the yeah. surroundings. No, I agree with you. I agree with you. And, and going back to the shows, I couldn't <coughs> do either one, uh, you know, alone or with a group. I would prefer the alone. The, yeah. the, the real life thing that you're talking about affecting people, that's where 
you know, yeah, I do get out on the river. I go into my zone. I go into me and one with nature in my realm. And then there's other times that, you know, I affect people. I got to make a difference. I got to make change. I got to be me. I got to be who I am. But there's other times, man, that, you know, I, I think I like to have certain people around because if I do get hungry on the protein diet, I'm at, um, <laughs> should we run handy? out of food? Uh, no. You know, I'm, I'm sorry, just Scott, saying I, we we could hunt together. We no, no hunting together no. as a pack is better. Brian, here's my two cents <laughs> of why he prefers to be alone and is one of our podcasts where he mentions about French Kish and a bear. That's oh, a yeah. good point. So, yeah, yeah, he needs dying. to be alone. I was like, right. <laughs> yeah, you don't want to watch that. It's gonna no. be actually no, I do. <laughs> I do want to watch that. <laughs> I really do. If you were to do a <laughs> pay per view saying Scott's gonna French kiss oh, a grizzly bear, yeah. I'm paying one fifty. <laughs> I am totally in for that. In fact, there's Brian put in a uh, Bob Ross painting session right there of the love that's happening. As you can see, happy little accidents right there. Happy little accidents. <laughs> Oh, you had to bring Bob into it. God bless Bob. Absolutely, but I I would love to see you on one of those shows. Oh, I think it fun, would be man. it would be uh, it, it would be a kick. You would definitely be a fan right. favorite. But, you think so? Yeah. Oh, I do. Yeah, I do. Yeah. Well, look, look, dude. It would be entertaining to oh, watch you. Oh, it would you. be entertaining yes. for sure. And again, you're in controlled doses. It's an hour show. You know that's. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's true. That's true. You know, you talk about that, and James, that reminds me, man, we have got to put up that that video you and I shot up there in the mountains uh, with me just reaching into the river, catching those brook trout. Oh, yeah, no, we've got, Dude, we got we some got, fun we, stuff we got up there in survival. We got cool footage, man, and we were, we were actually up there in the deep, dark timber. Dude, it was desolate, it was nice. deep, dark, and we're sitting by this this little creek, man, and I told, we started talking about survival shows. And I said, you know, James, here's the deal, man. You don't need a rod and a line and all that stuff. I said, man, check this out. And I just went up and I started, I become one with nature, moved up on that creek, reach in, pull this freaking brook trout out. I said, here's dinner. <laughs> Why not all that on video, man? It was awesome. See, I can see an episode of the show where you're sitting beside a bear by the stream and you're each catching salmon as they right. jump up. You know, the we salmon are jumping spot. and you're both you're fighting. But that was mine. Okay, you That's have it. it. All right, kiss you for it. <laughs> Well, in reality, too, it would be just like the bear, too. He'll have a couple and his hands slip right out because oh, those yeah. guys are slippery yep. little slickers. Oh, buddy. Drew and Scott will be nabbing them. Mm. You know? That's it. Thanks, buddy. <laughs> Butterfinger. No, I, dude, I love being one with nature, man. Have I mean, you ever um, Have you ever done an Alaskan adventure? I uh, have. You have? I have. You had an Alaskan I, fishing trip fishing or a hunting trip, trip or a bull? Actually, I've flown in, dropped off bears on the river. Fishing for salmon and king salmon. You bet. I've oh, done it. I've man. Done it. See that? Dude, what a thrill. That is actually, my wife and I were just talking about mm. this because we're seeing that uh, I think it's Frontier that is starting to do some more flights out of here. And one of them's uh, a nonstop to Alaska. Out of Loveland? Uh, no, 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 no. Oh, out of, oh. No, out of Denver. But oh, I thought okay. there was, uh, I swear she said something about even a, a nonstop to Alaska, wow. which that is our bucket list really uh, on our really? bucket list kyla and i both want to go to alaska i want to go to alaska oh. I, I desperately want to go on an alaskan fishing trip mm. i want to fish in alaska Absolutely. something i've never done i mean i i i you know i grew up fishing the waters of minnesota yep. you know rivers in north dakota and we used to go up into canada and yep. fish the lake yep. of the woods and different oh, yeah. places up there but i've never done the alaskan fishing trip that is definitely Definitely a bucket list item for me. I, I think about my bucket list, and I've been really fortunate in life that I've been able to check off most of the. Most I don't of it? really have a lot of things left. Really? That it's like, okay, this is something I must do. No kidding. But a Alaskan fishing trip is one of those, and Jello wrestling with Carrie Underwood is another. <sighs> but a. Uh, so <laughs> I'm sorry, I went there. Uh, that's, and I didn't mean to lead you in a direction, well, but I'm did. about to say. You led me in a direction. I am re I am chewing my own tongue off right now. Okay, I take back the whole jello thing. It was it was pudding. But uh, that's right. 
<laughs> and she Love wasn't even better no, than No, and Carrie wasn't even there. It was just me <laughs> and a whole swimming pool of pudding. <laughs> that is my bucket list right there. And nobody around, just me alone. Don't put up the garage anymore, dude. I'm just alone, French kissing a grizzly bear oh, in a see, pool of there pudding. There we go. Here we go. All right. No, <laughs> my turn? My turn? Yeah. My turn? Yeah. My turn? Yeah, yeah you go. Know. <laughs> No, and another one, I always wanted to see the Rolling Stones in concert. Okay, that was another. No kidding. Yeah, I've never seen the Stones, and that's no. a bucket list thing that right I on. always wanted well, to do. Well, if you ever go to Alaska, I would recommend the Kenai Peninsula. Uh, that's where we went, and I haven't been all over Alaska, but, man, the people there cater to the tourists. Uh, the fishing boats that go out of the Kenai Peninsula. They do like the tourists because there's oh, some yeah. places where you hear them just, they kind of... The locals don't care for the tourists, but the ones who are making money off the tourists. Right, right. No, it's all a fraudulent, we love you, we care okay. for you, we'll eat you if we need to. Under some marriage. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Marriage. Okay. Marriage. <laughs> yes, absolutely. Good call. Dude, nailed that one. Sheesh. Yeah. No, my bucket list, I'm the same way, man. I, uh, you know, I, I obviously, you know, want uh, teeth in a boat. Uh, no, you've yeah, said that. I, I need yeah, to have definitely. some work done, and, and I need a boat. But bucket list-wise, um, you know, there are two things that really stick to me. Now, we, we do have uh, we have an African safari trip paid for, a uh, hunting trip. We, we have that. We've been sitting on that for a while, a few years. Co- COVID, politics, yada, yada. So, that would be incredible. Yeah, so, so we are going to be doing that. We are going to be heading to Africa. And my goal to Africa, you know, there's lots of opportunities to hunt different uh, species, yada, yada. And my goal is not to go hunt any, but I mean, there, there's a couple I'd like to have, like the, the Cape Buffalo. I mean, just, I got a lot of respect for that big black beast, man. I mean, just a, just a incredible specimen. Yeah. Yeah. And I, I mean, I, that's a lot of protein. You know, I was thinking about my harvest, um, how much protein. You know, that half antelope I had last night just really wasn't as fulfilling as I thought. But, but the warthog, I want I, I a warthog. Want, I love the warthogs. I think them are something that just came straight from hell. They are fierce. <laughs> yes. I mean, they are some mean. And they son of put bucks. the you and ugly because you ugly. I mean, they yeah. But we're we're gonna do that. So that's kind of off the list. We have that bought and paid for. But I would really love to get a Yukon moose and a Kodiak bear. A Yukon. What's 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 Yukon, special about a Yukon moose? Yukon moose are legendary animals, man. They are the behemoths of behemoths. I mean, we're talking mega, hundreds and hundreds of pounds of protein, pure protein on the hoof, man. Um, is is it just being in the Yukon? You know, I'm always looking when I go up to the mountains, man. I like to go in Wyoming, one of the areas, the Savage Run Wilderness area. Because there's no, you're you're not allowed to drive vehicles, no motors, so you can't even do a scooter back in there. Uh, this is wilderness. This is one of the last frontiers, if you will. These wilderness areas that are around us all. I mean, you can find them. That we've got the railways up here uh, in Colorado. If you're adventurous and you are trained and know what you're doing, man, you go back into some of these places. You go back in time. Really. So the Yukon, being in the Yukon and and hunting moose, the hardcore way of the old, the old ways, and then the Kodiak bear, obviously the the grizzly of grizzlies, man. I mean, these things are just beyond giants, beyond legendary, and I'm sure they taste delicious. I can't wait. How hard would it be to get a tag for one of those two items, or is it even humanly possible? No, it totally is if you're it extremely is. wealthy. That's okay. That, <laughs> I knew there'd be a money yeah, deal no, in yeah, here. Yeah, yeah. It, yeah. It, it, no, you insane? can get it. Oh, yeah, no, yeah. 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 <laughs> Yeah, you can get your knockoffs, your cheap ones, but you 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 know you're hauling out a eighty pound grizzly or something like that, man. I mean, I want to go full out. It's not for the trophy. It's not for it is for a fulfillment of the inner me in this world and nature and what I do, man. To represent, you know, I've got specimens all over the place, yes. man, and I believe in these. Are these trophies? Is that the biggest gator in the world ever? No. No, man, but my story Mm -hmm. and eating, this particular dude provided me with 130 pounds 
of alligator meat that I brought home to the freezer second to none, not to, and I'm out. Not to mention, Scott, the one key thing that really drove me to uh, attract you, no homo, uh, to you, <laughs> um, it, it's because you, Edit. you utilize Radio the um, the animal because it's a nuisance control thing. It's like right. you're not doing just for pure sports or anything of that nature. No, it's, no. it's always, you took the, the animal because there was a specific reason. Like, you want to take that alligator for just the chits and giggles, no, for lack of better right, words, right? right. Well, and that's what's going on in our world today. There's a lot of wannabe sportsmen that are out there complaining and carrying on. And, you know, we we were just talking before we got on about do what's right. Do what's right. Hold yourself accountable. Make the right choices. A hunt, to me, it used to be, growing up young, was hauling home a carcass in the back of the truck. That's not what it's about, man. Dive into your inner peace, your inner self, man. Become one with the earth that from where we came. And, and dude, live this, this new level of life that you've never experienced before, man. I've took you there. No, you I've have. You and, and I love, you know, what, you, what you've taught me and I've seen from you about utilizing the animal and all sorts. It, it really changes your perspective on how you see the death of an animal, the way the way you do it. That's right. Uh, I was watching a documentary. Uh, you talk about the waste of animals. You you, oh. you talked about this gator. You know, harvesting. You had 130 pounds of meat. Yeah. You had all this. When I see footage of like right now, shark fin. There are places all yeah. over the country where they use shark fin for things, and it's a delicacy, and it's this, and it's really crap, but it's just a prestige thing. And then you see the bodies of all these mutilated sharks who are just laying there. Com- absolutely useless with with having that no that fins. their fin right. cut off of them, and they do nothing with with the rest of the carcass. Right. Have you seen footage of that? Yeah, James? no, the, the, this was a huge issue in uh, Japan. Yes, uh, because they were doing that. Because <coughs> you would see the footage as you mentioned, just them cutting the fins off and just throw the body in there, and the shark's just useless at that point. Mm. Um, you know, no respect for the rest of the carcass, no respect for the yeah. utilization of the other carcass. Um, it's to just, me, that's bullshit. It, agreed. It, it just it's damaging to not only the image but the whole ecosystem itself too, yeah. or something like that. Well, yeah. and and we look at Chinese medicine and what they do, and there's a difference between Chinese medicine and the euphoric side of it. I think is where they're going with the fins. I, I'm assuming. I, I don't know. But I don't. We 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 gotta. <clears throat> Yeah, man, we, we got to put a stop to that as humans, man. We, mm. we all have to hold ourselves. We can't. I know what you guys are talking about. And there's not a dang thing I can do from my point where we're at to change a difference to save a shark and its fins, yada, yada. But we can make a difference in this room right here today between us three. And that's what we do every day. We're together in this room. We change our realm as we proceed to move forward and make a difference. We got some comments uh, this morning. James was sharing, man, of, of what we do to people and people are sharing this stuff with Cisco MWE, with Critigator, with Mike in the Mountain. <clears throat> Man, that's that's where we gotta go. That's where we gotta keep taking this is let the people see that hey, we screw up. We screw up. We're human. We are human. But we're out toward the big picture, man, to make a difference for Mother Earth, for this planet, this rock we're on for future generations. I think one of the biggest things that we can do is if you want to make a difference, I think the very first step in any situation, educate yourself. Oh, absolutely. That's right, man. Just no, take that first step, so right. educate yourself, and then you'll be able to figure out what you need to do from there. No, it's true. And you can see how, you know, sometimes wildlife just fights against you and it doesn't work out right. And we have a, we have a video of that with uh, Scott with a snake rescue. Uh, that he attempted recently, right. which you can check out at CiscoMWE.com. Right. That was a tough uh, we've one, got that. I mean, it's, seriously, you want to see the situations that Scott gets in. And uh, this was one where, you know, he went in, thought he was in for something, and it turned out different. You need to see the video yeah, and, and yeah. check that out. But, you know... Uh, <laughs> this started with bucket lists, you know, <laughs> yeah, with going, yeah, we, you know, Alaska. We no, we always we do that. Yeah. But so yours, the, the, the those YouTube, it's, 
yours involve a couple of hunts. Uh, they they do. They do. That's, and it's a spiritual thing for me personally. No, I get I, you know, I, I think, hope you get to knock those off yeah, your list, man. Yeah. I hope every, you know, another one of mine I, I mentioned this I think last night is to mow my front yard shirtless. All uh, right. That is a bucket list goal Dude. of mine and, and I'm going to accomplish that yes, this summer. I am. James, you got anything on your bucket list aside from getting a house? Uh, yeah, the, computer? the house is probably number one right now. <laughs> okay. But, uh, I can't tell the other next 10 because that's not appropriate for the podcast. My number 11 um, would definitely have to be uh, space adventure stuff. I'm, I'm definitely one of those. Really? I just can't. It, dude, I know it scares a lot of people. Terrifies to see that, me. Yeah, nope, that vastness. Nope, nope. But, man, it's a reality check of how small we are in the grand scheme of things to oh, realize buddy. These petty things of what we deal with on an everyday basis. Don't get me wrong. It needs to be addressed, man. But we've got bigger fish to fry, man. Oh, yeah. Heading into Mars, hitting different galaxies and all this stuff. Right. And there's so much we can do with that whole potential of creating jobs, better resources, so on and so forth. So, yeah. No, it's – if I can get to space, walk on the moon as before my time ends, man. Oh, dude. I'm I'm going. Really? See, I'm claustrophobic. I'm afraid of heights, and speed doesn't do much for me. So, <laughs> yeah, those three things, and and I don't like to poop in a tube. That's a show. So you get those. <laughs> That's a show. You know, right there. those are the ones yeah. right there. Cool. Some Brian, enjoy that. Uh, you know, correction, Brian. It's not a tube. It's a diaper. Okay. Oh, like, done that. Never mind. I'm that more of an astronaut soon. than I thought. <laughs> 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 And I like Tang. Uh, so yeah, there, there, yeah, there you it. go. <laughs> hey, space it. ice cream uh, or astronaut ice cream is really good, too. I don't know if you guys had it. Dehydrated ice cream. I have tried what? that. It's really, really good, dude. Like, you know, it's MRIs and stuff. Sometimes it's going to be a little wonky or a little off-putting. Yeah. But when it comes to astronauts, MRI for the uh, the Napoleon ice cream, ooh, Ooh, it, it literally really? melts in your mouth, and it's it's a mind trip because it's not cold. When we were kids, they used to sell something called astronaut sticks, mm-hmm. and it was something like that. Yep, yep. But yeah. closest I ever got was a bomb pop. No. <laughs> 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 okay, yeah. let's go. Let's talk bomb pops because that's my grandson Zayden's favorite food bomb in the world. Pops, man. Every day he comes up. Ah, oh, just wonder if I could have bomb pop. <laughs> and how do you say no to that? Right. But right. but you got to be seriously. There are store brand ones that suck. Oh yeah. You no, need don't to buy get the, the knockoff. No, don't. You got to get the, the real bomb pop. It. Now, are you one who just will work the whole thing, or do you buy it color by? You don't even know there's colors. There's three colors on those. Yeah. Cars. yeah. Shut up! No, it's true. Oh, my bomb pops. Oh, bomb pops. I know they tasted funky at the top level, middle level, and the bottom level. Yeah, three but... different flavors there. Oh. I've always been one who who bites section by section. Right, right. Yeah, I don't do the whole thing. I'm gonna bite off that red, then I'm working the white, and then I'm gonna finish the blue. That'll take me like 20 minutes for me. I'm, I'm one of those who just enjoys like molasses, just suck. On oh, you're the slow. Like, you're oh, the same way with buddy. beer too, man. I've noticed you with beer. You love to sip and taste. It's like you, you're your palate's like analyzing I, right because i like that i, 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 I like it too that. because when i look at my homeboy uh yeah, brandon here he just like military style he'll just scarf that you have stuff. seven Boom. minutes to eat yeah. you yeah. get it done right, right, which <laughs> right i get that i do right yeah we're not in the military we're at old chicago's enjoy the pepperoni <laughs> pizza dude You're right no see now he would drive me crazy then Right. Because I remember when uh, my kids were little, we were taking my daughter, Vanessa, and one of her friends, Janelle, to a Nuggets game. Mm. All right. We stopped at Dairy Queen in Greeley as we're driving down to Denver for the okay. game. And everyone got an ice cream cone. We're driving, and we're pulling into Denver, and my daughter's friend is still licking her cone. And I'm like, mine was gone by I-25, <laughs> which I think most people would be, right, to right. sit there. And I'm sorry if you take that long. You need me to finish that oh, for yeah, you? Oh, yeah, no doubt. I mean, I could not. But that's that's like a 50-minute drive, and she was still <laughs> working her car. Wow. I just, wow. It, I, I'll admit, Brian, I do. I am situation awareness around my environment. So if we're at like Olive Garden or something like that, and people are almost done with their food, you know, I'll, I'll, I'll pick up the pace. I don't want to be yeah. that kind of guy that's just yeah, keeping sure. going. but. Uh, but if it's a drive, Brian, why, why can't she just enjoy the 50 minutes? What is she supposed to do in between time after getting done with that ice cream? Why don't you shut up? <laughs> <laughs> wow. <laughs> 
gonna go off on a brother. Ice cream, <laughs> man. Yep. I need the ice cream. Note to sell ice cream. So, I'm gonna write that, that shit down. Bullets yeah, number two for cream. Brian not to bring on conversations. <laughs> <laughs> Oh man! Hey, we all got our triggers. Man. We do. You know that we do. Yes, we do. <laughs> well, well, speaking of triggers, I've got a list. Lay it on I got me. an what actual got? list today. Okay. Well, we've we've got to get over to uh, uh, Fort Collins because we've got some squirrel problems, and then we got to go over to Loveland for some raccoons in an attic. Uh, I got to get a hold of a guy up in uh, Canyon here. He's having some problem with mountain lions, and uh, yeah, man, I got a hell of a list going this morning. This is, it's just That's another day. just this morning. <laughs> just another day. I think you had made the comment uh, earlier this morning about something about that the phone, you haven't had these little nuisance yeah. things popping up. Yeah. And then hey. you got it like a bunch right. of them where right. you were hoping one was a warranty call. Yeah. Yeah. That's <laughs> yeah. yeah. Yeah, talking about speaking things in, that's what we're, you know, be careful what you say. I'm going to win the lottery um, today. <laughs> Uh, but, but you gotta, you know, you, you do, you gotta, you gotta speak things into your realm, man. Speak it in, man. Speak in positive, speak in life, man. Live for today. It's yours. I tell you, I Only. was living the other day. Scott took me out back. Yes, uh, I did. And, and no, and, and he, oh. I am not one who is experienced with firearms. I, I I own a gun. I've you know I did the hunter safety. I've done all that, but I'm just learning. I mean, I have done next to no shooting whatsoever. And Scott's you know working on mm. on me and getting me versed. And I love it coming from him because if there's w one thing this guy preaches, it's safety, safety, mm. safety. He's a yeah. I and and I really really appreciate that. And you yeah. are right on with it. And I know it's it's probably a little bit uncomfortable teaching a novice you know new things in handling weapons but right. i appreciate that right now but 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 I'll, I'll i'll get there but it was just yeah. really really fun oh yeah i mean i can see i mean i yeah. got a little taste of all oh, this fun when you can look through a scope like that <laughs> and you <laughs> right. can see look at that it's right in the crosshairs and if right. i would have shot right i would have hit that <laughs> you know that would have <laughs> <laughs> right. No, I, I do want to give you credit. You massacred that cow pie. Thank you, thank did, you so much. You did well. Thank I you. I am proud thank of you. Thank you. And you know, that's where it starts. Cow pies. Did, is that what you started out shooting? Was out on the farm. Cans and cow pies, I would imagine. Cow pies. Mine was with a 410, though. So it was really fun because you could splatter the cow pie. If you got a fresh <laughs> one, man, you could blow it all over. You're fertilizing. You're just spreading it out over the pasture, you know? Good stuff. That's the, yeah. Well, I was saying it's, I mean, I'm not the first one who's learning because this was a record year for gun sales. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Absolute record Well, we hope they're year. learning. That's where I was Whoa. going is, <laughs> you know, I'm slowly learning and I'm thinking, man, I should have had to do this before they gave me one. Right. You know, it's right. kind of my thinking. Right. But, hey, I under, whatever. No, but you had but, to get, get one before they were gone. That's the hype. It's just like toilet paper, man. I got Remember mine that? this yes, <laughs> but I got mine the soon as it hit last March. Right, right. You know, I went in and I got one right away, and then they started to get harder and harder to get. I don't yeah. know if it's gotten any better uh, of nope. late or not. No, no, nope. nope. As somebody who's got his conceal, um, no, no. Those weapons, ammo is still on the shortage and stuff like ammo that. Ammo is still and too. What was so bizarre, and I, I, it's not bizarre. I get the madness, man. But during the hunting season for you mm. and I, it, Scott, is there was no hunting rifle bullets for me to purchase. So thankfully, right. I kept that mentality. You always mentioned, Scott, always buy two boxes when you're at the store um, because I had some leftover rounds. But man, rifles, tee shots, like the whole spectrum was just decimating. Still is for the most part. Well, so is it going to come down to hand-to-hand -to -hand combat for hunting? I hope uh, so. Is that, yeah. <laughs> or semi-swords. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to go back to cleaning my fingernails. No, let's add to the bucket list. <laughs> let's go. <laughs> oh, man. No, let's go into that gun safety. That's important, man. I want to touch base with that. In our area out here, Liberty Firearms, that's something that James is a member of. Mm -hmm. um, I've been there several times. Uh, if you own a gun and you're going to be a responsible gun owner and not give the guns this horrible reputation of the guns are killing everybody, um, listen, do your part. 
educate yourself. Liberty Firearms, I'm putting a plug in right now. Uh, they are right here on the Colorado Front Range. Beyond top-notch safety. Nth degree safety at this range, man. It's an incredible range. Everything from high-powered rifles to guns. I mean, just get involved with something in your neighborhood to help educate yourself and practice your shooting. They're very friendly too. Simple. They they want to help you educate yourself. Like if, if you're an amateur, just walk in and just saying, hey, <clears throat> just need some help figuring this madness out. I don't know where to begin. They'll guide you in the right ways to make that happen. I mean, I can tell you how many times I've tried to figure out the, um, the 30 odd six. I'm still yep. learning this gun and I've yep. had it for a while. And some of these range members, as I'm at the range, um, they help me understand the weapon even more oh, yeah, better man. and efficiently. Um, even the past year too as well. So they, they do want to help. And I agree, Scott, it's uh, just educate yourself. Yes. I, get, I get everything crazy right now, but you know, learn the tool that you have just like anything and else. don't be afraid to ask. As yep. men, that is something with our pride and our testosterone. Listen, when you're on the range and you're, you're there and there's other guys, man, ask. Talk to people, man. You'd be surprised what you can learn and what other brothers are around you or even sisters that know more about your gun than you do and can help you with some things, man. Don't be afraid to ask, ever. You know, as somebody who's got, okay, I got the hunter safety card, I've got license <clears throat> where I could go and, and, and hunt certain things, but I wouldn't feel confident or comfortable yet, mm -hmm. even though legally I could do it. Mm -hmm. I know within me, I need a lot more training. And that's where I have mad respect because there's a lot of people that get everything you're talking about and then just head up to the mountain. Well, that's what I'm. That's what I'm wondering. God, is, is that is that the norm? And it, that's what scares me about the gun sales the way right, where they are, right. and as so many you know people, first timers who are going out. Mm. How many of them haven't taken the time to actually learn anything other than just get a card? Oh no, that's. I mean, we put in for tags last year. We were <coughs> unsuccessful. Last year was the toughest year. Even leftovers, there was no leftover tags. I'm a little grateful to be honest. Because with the COVID and politics, everybody had this mind frame of, I'm going to provide for my family. Absolutely. I'm going to go get the meat. They're getting up to the mountain going, are we even in the right area? Where's the grocery store? <laughs> I thought this, <laughs> there was a deer section up here somewhere. <laughs> no, Yeah, it's no, I'm glad we didn't hunt last year. I'm not, I don't hunt public ground. I, I don't hunt public ground. We I've had some mishaps. Uh, now being the nuisance wildlife control people we are, the relationships that I have with farmers and ranchers, uh, we do a lot of predator control, and we are blessed in the sense of uh, having the opportunity for landowner tags on private property that not That's only we go up and do, uh, we don't have to worry about bullets whizzing by and, and crazy stuff like that on public ground, uh, but... You know, we, we have the opportunity to not only help the rancher, but help first and foremost wildlife conservation, being a part of this. We're not trophy hunting by no means. I mean, these are all doe tags from doe antelope, doe, doe deer, and cow elk. I mean, this is not, there's no trophy. We focus on how much can we get in the freezer. Yes. You know, James was so mad at me, his first deer, because I whittled through this deer so quick he was he was literally pissed because Did he didn't get to learn the dressing right because oh, that's what I they call dress, dressing the deer and it just blew my mind i, like, I, I can it. see him with the deer it's like off like a prom dress and he's got to i you know? did not you blink brian and it was done you're right just blink and it was done see i'll watch these shows where they'll go and they get the kill and then they got to pack that thing out yes oh, you yeah. know and watch all that and how much time it's like well we're gonna run out of daylight not a problem with him yeah. No, no, far from it. Because yeah. uh, you see some people even quarter it out because of how much weight and stuff on that uh -huh. as well, too. But no, with Scott, man, it's just field to dress it. And here's a couple of sticks to throw it on. And we're just carrying out like a bunch of tribesmen who just got done with the barbarian hunt. <laughs> how, seriously, because I watch, and these animals, I mean, there's a lot of meat sometimes. Oh, there's, there's how, a lot of meat. There's a lot of meat. But you have got to be careful. You'll waste a lot of meat. Well, I'm wondering how many times have you gotten out, you may make the kill you 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 know you you dress it you you getting it ready and you're going to haul back and then you go wow we should have parked closer oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> well that's the difference between a real hunter and a wannabe hunter because i've been on some trips man that we had to leave the deer on site 
and get off the mountain with the storm coming in. I had to I had to field dress oh, okay. the deer yeah. and get it hung up and left it there. And I left it there with some of my clothing on it because with the smell, smell. of human scent, okay, this is our predators me are going to come okay. in and devour. Now yeah. they're going to clean up the gut pile and all that stuff. And that's nature, man. That's what we do. We we harvest. We provide. It's all give and take, man, in the realm. Um, but yeah, we. I've had to leave it there and pack back in the next day. Matter of fact, this particular trip I'm thinking about for the deer, it was so far back in there, Brian. Uh, we were waist deep snow at different times. I mean, this was the hunt of hunts. Literally, when we woke up the next day, dude, I couldn't hardly move. I hurt so bad. Really? From packing through the snow to the deer to butcher it, harvest it, and then go back to camp. I mean, it about killed me. I thought, there's no way I'm getting that deer today. I can't get out of bed, man. I can't move. I hurt that bad. <laughs> but yeah, we that's that is a hunt. That's what leaves the memory. And you know what's really cool about that hunt, Brian? I got to share this is there were some of the most monster mule deer I've ever seen in my life. And you know what the cool part was? I took one that hands down to me was a trophy, but it was a genetic freak meaning or a non-typical not in the sense that it had a bunch of horns but it didn't have as much horn this dude was i believe he's a 28 inch wide and he was only a three point buck deer he should have been a full six by six this dude was only a three by three so in understanding deer knowing deer and wildlife i harvested an animal that we don't really want to genetically reproduce mm -hmm. because it's not a prime specimen of its species man it's not a good representative of a healthy genetic animal so i harvested it i did mount it it's up there on the wall uh and it is the memory of a lifetime man of of a real down and dirty life-threatening hunt just hearing Living. you say that makes me picture a bunch of bears <clears throat> sitting around Looking at a guy walking through and going, you know, genetically. <laughs> <laughs> well, we need to take him out of the herd. <laughs> that goes on, though. That's I'm real. wondering if it Not does. necessarily with wildlife, but with disease. We look at humans and how we love to feed our squirrels and we love to have our wildlife on the back porch. And we think it's so cute and fun and cuddly. And then zoonotics, wildlife disease historically looking back oh god it was the cause of all of our major deaths in the world man well you bring up a point here though uh scott is um but it's also a struggle too with hunters for the most part the good true hunters to make that right decisions i'm not going to take the big shiny buck right, versus right. i need to take out that one who needs to be taken out of the gene right. pool for the survival of that species that's, that's right. conservation right that is conservation and that's what we do I could have had mm. monsters of monsters, man. That's not what it's about for you. No, man. No. no. I had to get that genetic dude out. I knew he was going to eat fine. Ate the same, didn't he? No, yeah. He ate the same. He yeah. ate good. <laughs> he ate good. I decided that this year, James, we are going to actually do a little butchering of our own. I want to do the tomahawk steaks with deer. We're going to do that Ooh. with our deer. Yeah. We're going to do some tomahawks. See, now, I would dig that. You deer have, tomahawks. Now, I wow. only see that usually with lamb shanks look like a tomahawk, kind of, yep. don't they? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, there's, there's a butcher uh, over here that actually does it with beef. Uh, yeah? Uh, the whole rib bone and, you know, the majority of it's hanging off your plate with that rib eye right there. Yeah. Okay, once again, <laughs> this brought to you by the corn board. Uh, that's a, <laughs> just like yes. get yeah. your seed in the ground today. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> we didn't get through your list, did we? No, we've touched absolutely nothing. <laughs> We're set for next week. Well, uh, I do have a list that I've I got to touch today. No, so. I know With you need to do said, that. No. Oh, 
Look, I know when I'm being pushed out the door, buddy. <laughs> I've gotten this before. Well, yeah. All right, that's... Yes, you have. Uh, yes, okay. <laughs> as soon as he brings up the knife, this is when I say, it's a wrap. It's a wrap. And uh, we look forward to visiting with you next time. Always so much fun. I just... Oh, I, I, I hope dude. you know how much I live for this. I, I live for this every week to get together with these guys and do this and uh, just, just have some fun. And uh, if we can entertain and educate along the way, that's kind of our goal. But, it is, and... and you know, the one thing that I hope is that we can bring out the monster in you. That was good. That, that, was that, good. that wasn't that was good. bad. Yeah, yeah, it would have been cooler if we weren't made of paper. Uh, that would have been a good time. <laughs> Yeah, okay. No, you looked badass. The crunching sound That's added right. in with the sound effects. It was pretty good. It was. <laughs> and, but thanks for checking out the Mike in the Mountain. Be sure, we were talking about Scott's snake video. We've got a new video yeah, we want you out. to check out. See his bravery in action. <laughs> Shut up. Go to CiscoMWE.com and check that out. And also get some good tips on your home defense as well. That's Until right. next time, it's the Mike in the Mountain. I'm Brian Gary. Scott Cisco. We'll talk to you soon. And we'd love your feedback. We would. And we went through the whole show without you saying beaver. I do. I wanted to say it so many times. I did. I wanted to say oh, it so many man. times. And I was just like, to your tongue, to your tongue. Put tongue, this tongue. on the calendar. Uh, oh, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm.